Landscape burn probability, or LBP, quantifies the relative likelihood and intensity of a fire occurring under a fixed set of weather and fuel moisture conditions. This type of modeling is most often used for fuel treatment planning to predict where fires are most likely to occur and what the intensity will be if and when they do. This facilitates strategic placement of treatments based on the findings. In this video, we'll walk through an example run and briefly summarize the outputs. The LBP model can be accessed from the strategic planning stage of the planning cycle under hazard exposure and risk assessments. It's also available in the playground under the model drop-down menu. Once the LBP model is selected, you can choose a landscape for your run from the drop-down list. You may choose any landscape that you've created or edited. To speed modeling times, landscapes with a combined extent and buffered area over 250,000 acres undergo an automated resampling step once the model run is submitted. The resolution will be between 60 meters and 120 meters, depending on landscape size. Next, populate the wind, crown fire, and fuel moisture fields to represent a problem fire or worst case conditions. Some examples of this could include 90th percentile conditions or above, or conditions representative of a past local fire that resulted in a blow-up. If you don't have any of these, you can contact a local fire manager for this information, or you can run an Auto 97 summary on your landscape and use those conditions. By default, LBP is set to use random ignitions, which are modeled continually until approximately 98% of the landscape is burned. The option to use ignitions from a completed run allows you to reuse ignitions from a previous run on the same or an edited version of that landscape. Uh, this allows you to conduct identical LBP runs on untreated and treated versions of a landscape to compare results. For the simulation time section, input the burn period length in hours. Because we're representing problem fire conditions, your burn period should reflect the active burning period of wildfires for the area under extreme conditions. Next, you'll input spotting. This is used by the model to determine if embers are launched and whether launched embers will land. Spotting probability in IFTDIS is set to a default of 20%, which is recommended for most scenarios. However, this value can be changed to any value between 0 and 100% if needed. Entering 100% means that all points on the landscape where a crown fire is initiated will launch embers. A value of 0, in essence, turns off spotting. Next, give your run a descriptive name and click Run. Your run may take anywhere from 15 minutes to several hours, depending on landscape size and the model inputs you entered, as well as how many other users are running LBP. I'll note here as well that a maximum of three LBP runs can be processing in the system at any given time. So if you attempt a fourth run, you will receive a notice and you'll have to save those inputs and resubmit the run when one of the other three has completed. Once you've submitted a run, you can check your status in the queue by viewing the right-hand panel for your run. In this example, we can see our place in the queue. We are number three of three, indicating we're third in line. The system will send you an email when your model run is complete, or you can also check its status in Modeling Playground. You can use the number of ignitions and percent area burn to help gauge the model's progress. Upon completion, burn probability, conditional flame length, and integrated hazard will be viewable in Map Studio, as well as in a summary report. A download package will also be available that contains a multi-banded geotiff, this also contains additional outputs such as proportion of flame lengths, uh, fuel moistures, and mid-flame wind speed. Let's take a second to have a look at our outputs here. Burn probability quantifies the likelihood of a fire occurring under a fixed set of weather and fuel moisture conditions that we've input. Red indicates areas of highest burn probability and blue indicates the lowest with the range of colors and probabilities in between. Conditional flame length is an estimate of the average flame length for all the fires that burn a given point on the landscape under a fixed set of weather and fuel conditions. 
Integrated hazard combines these two outputs, burn probability and conditional flame length, into a single characteristic that can be mapped. In IFTDIS, we use the matrix below to map integrated hazard. We can see that burn probability and integrated hazard are dynamic and scale dependent. For example, if we change the extent, the values will change to better display high burn probability values within that landscape area. Masks can be added post-modeling and used as well. If you need to use inputs in other applications, you can go into Workspace and click Download for raster files, symbology files, a Flamapp input file, and Firesize list. These make it easy to open and view outputs in ArcMap with a similar display as shown in Map Studio, as well as rerunning LBP in Flamapp. Because LBP spatially identifies relative burn probabilities across the landscape, it can help you prioritize and strategically place treatments using the best available science. That's a short introduction to LBP. For more information, you can go to Help Center and read about LBP in the modeling section.